I love what's, what's happening here. It seems like Brett Vich, um, I know a couple of weeks ago we talked about going all in for three Pete um, yeah. and trading assets. And yeah, you know, we were talking at that time, it was a Tyreek Hill trade about trading assets, like, you know, mortgaging your future for a guy like that. But like, we're trading assets, a 2026 six round pick conditional for a guy who can come in and be an instant impact. Uh, that's the kind of moves we're making. And that's the kind of moves I think we thought was going to happen. We thought Fred Beach was going to make the moves around the edges type of moves. Um, yeah. Not go, not get a superstar because we don't really need that. We just need moves to help us here and there. And also guy, a guy who's young, like Josh Uche, just a little bit about him. He was a second round pick uh, back in 2020. Uh, came out the same draft class as our guy, Mike Dana from the University of Michigan. So Mike Dana and him were teammates at the University of Michigan. Uh, we ended up trading a conditional six round pick. And I believe if we, I believe if he goes to free agency, that becomes uh, it stays a, it stays a six round. But if we sign him, I think it's a, a it becomes a fifth round pick. I believe um, I, that that's what I believe it is. Um, okay. But yeah, uh, and, and, and if he leaves in free agency, he becomes a six round pick, and we get a seventh round pick from New England, a conditional. So it's pretty much like a, like a swapping of picks if he ends up leaving free agency. So like really no risk at all to, to getting this guy. Uh, but nonetheless. You know, I'm looking at uh, some numbers here uh, from him. Um, and apparently from the PFF, uh, he, uh, Uche's 17.5% pressure rate since 2022 ranks the fifth highest in the NFL. So this guy, I mean, 6'1", 240, he's pretty much a guy who just goes against quarterbacks. I mean, that, that, that's what he is. Uh, he only had, they had 12 and a half sacks two years ago. So mm -hmm. this is a young guy who can get to the pass, who can get to the pass. And this is what we always talk about. You never have enough edge rushes. You and I have been saying that for a long time. We thought the team really didn't kind of, you know, was, you know, hesitant with it. But, you know, now we go when a man who comes back, that's a guy. Uche, we haven't seen anything from Cam Thomas yet. I've seen some people in the, in the chat asking about Cam Thomas. I don't know why we haven't seen him at all. But nonetheless, if that's another guy who's back there um, that we could potentially rotate in. Carl Lottis has come alive after we talked about the show a couple weeks ago. When are we going to see some sacks? He's finishing. He's looking phenomenal. Um, and yeah, we have Dana who's, who's missed the last few games. That's another guy to rotate in there as well. Um, and then, you know, Tershawn Warden from the, from the inside, but JD, how impactful of a move is this, uh, Joshua Uche? Uh, I think he's going to be able to give us a lot, uh, especially from, uh, his, his, his skill standpoint. Uh, he, he's a guy that's to me is a pure pass rusher, a stand up linebacker. Uh, he, he's more of a guy that you would think would be more in a, a kind of a three, four, a defense, uh, if you will. Uh, but for here, he, he's, he's going to be able to add on to like what Mike Dan and those guys do. Uh, somebody said Leo Chanel, he's not really a linebacker like that in that, that regard, uh, Leo could cover a little bit more, uh, but we do ask him to set the edge. And so he'll be able to do a lot of that here. Uh, but be able to come off the football third down, second down, uh, he's going to be able to give up a whole lot. And so, uh, He's going to bring – you said he was fifth since what? You said 2000 and what? 2022, so fifth highest pressure rate since 2022. That, and that's what we need, man. We need we need more pressures, more pressures. Uh, there was there was spots in the game yesterday that that we kind of couldn't get back there to, to Garden Minshew. And Garden Minshew, is a, he's a decent quarterback, but, you know, somebody that, you know, kind of a pocket passer, you give him some time to pick you apart. You need that guy that's going to be able to, you know, generate some pressure. Uh, it was good for us to see to get, you know, the five sacks yesterday. Uh, and we've seen a lot of different pressures. And so he just added up to the element because let's just say you get like Kalafkis gets tired. You can bring him in for for that. Uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, uh, Amenahu, same thing. He comes back. Uh, he's going to be able to, to come in and gel in, man. What we're trying to do is, man, we're, we're trying to bring – somewhat of a, a very stingy, fast defense against teams that's going to go deep into the playoffs. And so when you have a guy like this, uh, especially with the type of packages that Spags runs, uh, he's going to fit in real well with what we do. Uh, and so the thing is, because we know Spags like moving guys around inside, outside, wide and whatnot, get him out into coverage uh, as well, uh, he, he's just going to add on to it, man. He, he just makes us that much better. And so with Minahu coming back too, uh, that one, two punch, even three. So we got four punches. So you, Mike Nana, you know, Uche, uh, Charles Amenahu, we got, you know, uh, Kalafkis on the outside, FAU coming in. I mean, it's, it's, I, I look at what our D lines has been doing. They've been getting a lot better. Our pass rush is, is, is definitely going to 
you know, like I said, ascend to a much uh, different range now. So it's good. So, yeah, Reese said, yeah, that pressure is going to help out the DBs, too. Absolutely. That's a great point. Uh, and we understand this because anytime you get that type of pressure on quarterbacks, then the secondary doesn't have to cover as much. And we know we run a whole lot of man. Uh, and, and it's going to be a little bit different because we are without Jalen Watson. We wanted to see how things look with uh, Joshua Williams and Nazi. Nazi is going to be out because of concussion protocol. Uh, and so, you know, this is going to help out for our secondary as well. So th there were some things we had to look at yesterday uh, as well, too, as far as coverage wise. Because we got some young guys back there, man, that still need to develop. And so uh, when injury comes in, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for guys to make some growth, make some, uh, uh, you know, significant changes uh, to their game, understanding what it is that you want them to do. And hopefully we'll, we'll move accordingly to that, baby. So that's going to be it. What do you, what do you think of the, the move as far as, um, cause I've seen some few things here. Uh, some people say Mike Dana might not, Mike Dana, Mike Dana might be more injured than they're letting on the fact of bringing another guy for the D line, even though, I mean, Dana plays a little bit inside and outside, mm -hmm. uh, but also to maybe a man who's not that close to coming back. Maybe they're bringing this guy in because, you know, they're, while we think reinforcements are on the way, maybe it's a little bit more of a, a little bit longer than we anticipate with the man who, and I'm seeing now a man who was supposed to drop his podcast episode tonight, his fight is his finale of his comeback uh, video. He uh -huh. just, he put tweeted a couple hours ago saying it's going to be on tonight at 8 PM. And then he just tweeted about 10 minutes ago. Uh, sorry guys, there will be delay on the final episode of season one of the journey. I will keep everyone updated on when it will drop. I appreciate those who support best believe though. I'm almost ready. Um, so some people are just saying, Oh, Supposed to be his finale, maybe hinting at a return. Now he's delaying that a little bit. We just bring in this guy. I don't know. People are just always trying to, you know, put, put tinfoil hats on, trying to predict stuff. But who knows? Um, and uh, quite frankly, if that is the case, if there is a little bit of delay, maybe the team doesn't want him to like say, hey, like hold off on the return uh episode if that is what, what was coming out. Uh, but but JD, what what do you make of the just pretty much bringing in reinforcements, regardless of Amanda Who or Dana? Yeah, I, I didn't know all this was like going on as far as like his you know show and stuff like that. But but I mean a good depth piece. You, I mean you can never get too many pass rushers. I don't care what you do. You get a pass rush, you get another guy that's going to come in and, and help out. A guy that's been uh, 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 very successful. Shoot, that, I mean go get him. And so if we had a chance and opportunity to go get a guy like that, man, hey, let him suit it up. So Veach is going here and he's making it work. Uh, and so that's that's a wonderful thing to see. So if you get a guy with this type of a caliber guy, young guy, that could come in and, and like I said, add on to what we've been doing, it gets us better, then we made the right move. We made the right move. And he's young too. And we, and, and also a lot, a lot of people were surprised about getting a guy who's like a, a strictly a pass rushing specialist. We usually get guys a little bit, do a little bit of both, who have a little bit more utility wise. So this is kind of out of the, out of the norm for a Brett Beach uh, trade, but we talk about it all the time. We don't have enough of that. We haven't had enough of those guys. You look at Spags back in the day. He had a uh, human your was uh, a pastoral specialist and, and Matthias uh, Kiwanuka was also a pastoral specialist. Spags had a little bit of revolving door, a little bit of rotation with some of those guys who could just do that. And we haven't really mm -hmm. had enough of that. So now we bring in a guy who can do that. And maybe we can bring back a little NASCAR uh, defense that has Spags made famous in New York. It'd be kind of fun. Well, there we go, 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 go. Yeah. It's a first down, it's a first down, it's a first down. This football season, I'll be putting down normal sodas like Coca-Cola for Olipop. Olipop offers a healthier alternative with its low sugar content and natural ingredients. Olipop is more than just a drink. It's a wellness companion that supports your digestive health. Packed with prebiotics, this fizzy elixir helps promote good bacteria in your gut, leading to improved digestion, and overall well-being. So go ahead, click the link in the description and use promo code SODALOVE and get your can of Olipop so you can enjoy the game guilt-free. Go Chiefs. Use the promo code SODALOVE for 15% off now. That that will be Spags, like I said in, in, in the tweet, man. He was in his bag. And so when you have a guy like that, that, that has that type of ability, uh, not just with speed, but I'm talking about technique with hands, being, I think I see Mike Brennan talking about it. Um, he's a bet for an edge rusher. He will need time to get his elite bend or coming around from the corner after he's talking about a minute who, 
but with Uche, Uche is ready now to do that bit. And so uh, we watched him go with was it uh, with against Smith up there with the Jets, and he did a move inside and out, man, and got his hands down. I was like, man, that that is uh, that's smooth, synced in perfectly. Um, and so if that adds on, and, and here's why that's so important. Because we got guys on the inside that's going to be able to, to to push the depth of the pocket. We know Chris Jones does a great job of that. Great job, job of that. That's almost like we were talking about yesterday and, and when I was saying, what do you do to try to stop Patrick Mahomes? So not even just Patrick Mahomes, but most quarterbacks. And I said that, you know, you, and your, Antonio Pierce was talking about cage rush. Well, what does cage rush mean? It means you're putting pressure from all sides, areas, and you know they had two outside, very talented guys yesterday that – could get to the outside to squeeze you in and guys up the, up the middle squeeze you in too. So they just asked the guys at the middle to push, push the pocket. Okay. Push the depth. We get the width. And we're just going to cry, you know, crowd you in like a cage. That's what it's going to look like, like that, like cage, you know, crowded up. The thing is they had no idea that we have Houdini named uh, Patrick Mahomes is going to be able to the best escape artist. <laughs> they can do things like that. So it's hard uh, to put Houdini in a, in, in a cage. I, I, I mean, that's why he was he was known for it. So Patrick Mahomes is our uh, modern day Houdini, getting out of every little trap that you put him in, uh, and very successful. Hit him over the head, man. Looked great yesterday. Looked great. So uh, big deal. I know we're talking. I know a lot of people are talking about the aspect of you know just that. What does that mean for a minute? What does it mean for Mike Dana? But Mike Brennan brings up a good point here. You know, we you know Nazi goes out of concussion. Uh, Jalen Watson after the season. Um, you know, people, people think we're going to bring in a cornerback, but another way to get around that is it by having pass rush and making uh, the, not, not, not a lot of time back for a quarterback to find the openings in the secondary. You bring in another pass rusher, and that's that's a good that's a good point by Mike Brandon. If you got questions at cornerback, rush the passer faster, and that will fix the coverage issue. What do you what do you think about that? Fix it'll help it out. It wouldn't fix it. It'll help it out. So. Uh, those guys in the secondary, they, that's why they get paid the big bucks because uh, you need for them to, to go man against, you know, the big dogs that's catching the football. So um, those guys still got to do their job, and it will help them out. So I don't know fix. fix that's not a fix for that um, because when it, when it boils down to it, and we seen it yesterday, you know, like Brock Bowers catching one over, uh, you know, McDuffie. Uh, Jacoby Myers getting open. I mean, that that those are some of the things that technique-wise, those guys just got to do a much better job. And so it, it's going to require the younger guys to be focused, uh, work on fundamentals, uh, it, be a little bit more uh, uh, physical on some of the receivers, not let, just letting them run, open up your hips, turn, like all those different things. Uh, so, yeah, this will absolutely add on to it to help them out. It will try to fortify what we do defensively, but those guys still in the secondary has got to do their job. Uh, so, yeah, Mike Brent says duct tape, adding some duct tape to the uh, with the, the secondary. Um, so we got we got a few questions. Uh, so our guy Amda, I pr- appreciate the contribution, brother. We really appreciate that, man. Um, Which Amda Brown? Yes, sir. Amda JD, let us know if Uche meets your requirement for a Robin for Chris Jones. Uh, well, it, I was looking more Robin like on the inside, right beside him, kind of Robin. Uh, but he's part of the Super Friends. We do that. That's that's part of the uh, we'll say it, the Super Friends or or uh, the Justice League. So it, it, he adds on to it. So maybe he's not the Robin, but he is the Aquaman, or he is you know Green Lantern, or or, or you know. He, one of those guys, if you will, you know, plastic man, some of the comic folks out there. So, you know, U- Uche and um, Uche and Camp Thomas, the, the Wonder Twins, maybe they're, they're part of the Super Friends as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a long time ago, but Wonder Twins, some people are like, huh, what are y'all talking about? Yeah, so <laughs> like they made, they made an impact, they made not the, may not the most impact, but they made an yeah. impact in the Super Friends, made the impact, absolutely. Damn, <laughs> bucket of water. Form of an ice slide. So, yeah. that's uh, funny. I, I, we, we say super friends. Like I need, I need like that reference. Um, 
I mm-hmm. appreciate you, Monica Sloan, for the uh, the contribution. Really appreciate that. Uh, Danny Akers, <laughs> I appreciate the contribution as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Flash, Ruben the Cruiser, Flash, yes, Justice League. So, everybody knows what we talking about. And Turk Robin. Robin. Yeah, Turk has been, he's been Robin. He has been. He's been Robin. So, he's been, he's been, he's been showing up a lot this year. A lot this year. Uh, Mike Pinnell had a good game. He had a, he had a good game. Uh, on those, uh, you know, the, uh, the four down territory, we, we stuffed, we stuffed them uh, from getting in the end zone. Derek Nandi had a great, great, uh, a uh, couple of uh, reps pushing guys in the backfield. And so what I'm seeing up front, man, the, the, they they understand as far as like what they need to do uh, to help our linebackers run. And so they, they've been playing at a very high level, man. I've been pleasantly uh, uh, not surprised, but I've been pleased. I've been pleased with our D tackle play. Okay. Everybody not named Chris Jones. They're doing a good job. Yeah, and that's been one of the questions we've had going to the season the last few years since we started the show, and mm-hmm. they've been fantastic uh, this year. Um, Mike Brand, shout out Nadi. Yeah, shout out to Nadi. Yeah, my man. You know, <laughs> and I think I think you know what with, with Nadi, I think I think you know because he had that injury. And sometimes you just you you know just to get strong and get your push like you had before may take some time. May take some time. So. Uh, and, and I think he's coming around the time that he needs it. Those guys have been filling in really well uh, at that position. Uh, Turk has been taking advantage of every rep that he's been doing. Mike Pinnell has been coming on. So uh, that's been a, that's been a good deal. 70s cartoons was the best. No question about it. No question about it. 70s, 80s cartoon. I was just thinking like one that came to my mind, Thundar the Barbarian. That's another one. Shoot. You might not know about it. Which, what was it called? Thundar the Barbarian. Was was that a was that a Hanna Barbera uh, cartoon? Hanna Barbera, I think so. Was I think it? I think so. Yeah, yeah. We had 80s cartoon, eighties car, eighties cartoons is where we at. That's yeah, that's my era right there. Eighties cartoon. Yeah. So, were you a Master of the Universe fan? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He man. Yeah. 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 My middle name is Adam, so Adam, you know, of course. Ah, Prince Adam. Yeah. Yeah, Prince Adam. So like, there you oh, go. Okay. Pretty cool. <laughs> uh, but uh, overall, though, um, A plus move. I know. I know we're going to get to the grades for the position of the, how they played yesterday. But uh, what was uh, what was you grade this move? Everybody's naming all the cartoons: Jackson Five, <laughs> Thundercats, He Man. I uh, yeah. I I think it was you know it was a uh, B plus A, B plus A for sure. Um, yeah, it, it was it was a good move for us. Good move. Like I said, it's going to make us much make us much better on defense. Uh, we're we're killing it right now, from a defensive standpoint. So this just makes us that much better. Mm-hmm. Everyone's everyone's throwing in their uh, their favorite <laughs> '80s cartoon shows. I'm hey, loving man. it. Cast. <laughs> yeah. See Johnny Quest. Like, so I I watched a little Johnny Quest. I wasn't really a Johnny Quest fan as much. Uh, I remember he had the the Indian uh, guy that was friends with him. I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. See Voltron. They didn't make a live action movie of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, when I was growing up, all my, all my friends watched the Cartoon Network and stuff. But I had older brothers, right? So, like, I would watch the new stuff. Like, dude, what are you doing watching that? You need to be watching the old stuff. So I, they, they would put it on like the Boomerang channel. So I'd watch like the old school cartoons. You know, the Super Friends, uh, Johnny Quest, um, mm-hmm. Jetsons, Flintstones, all the original ones. Um, yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm with the '70s '80s crowd with the cartoons. Oh yeah, yeah, great times back then. Jets and Flip Stones mask. Oh, uh-uh. oh yeah. mask. I don't know that one. Mm. Yeah, Johnny Quest is a solid one. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thunder was a caveman and got into fights with neighborhood T Rexes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thunder <laughs> the Barbarian. <laughs> Hi everybody! Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.